Microsoft just delivered some devastating news to the SharePoint development community. They're killing SharePoint framework field customizers in June 2026, eliminating functionality that lots of organizations have relied on for nearly eight years. This isn't just a feature retirement that we've heard about before. This is a betrayal of developer trust that raises some serious questions. Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. I'm a 20-year veteran of Microsoft's productivity ecosystem predating Microsoft 365, and I focus on topics for full-stack developers just like you. If this topic interests you, check out my free newsletter where I talk about the same kind of topics and I share the most important news in the Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure space for full-stack developers delivered straight to your inbox. Now, let me explain what field customizers are and why this retirement is such a big deal. Field customizers are one of three different extension types that are supported by the SharePoint framework, or they were. Microsoft created this uh, feature to bridge the functionality gap that was left when they moved uh, from the SharePoint Classic mode uh, experience to the modern experience. In Classic SharePoint, we use things like JS Link and client-side rendering, or CSR, to customize how columns appeared in lists and in forms using JavaScript. And this allowed for rich customizations, including business logic and validation and interactive elements that went far beyond simple formatting. Now, Microsoft released field customizers in 2017, several months after the initial SharePoint framework release. And initially, they only supported read-only scenarios in lists. But Microsoft promised to add a few operations for, uh, for forms with a, within a few months. Well, they never delivered on that promise for field customizers, and they eventually introduced list form customizers years later, although we didn't get a proper deployment mechanism for it. We were left to do it on our own. Now, field customizers, they gave developers the power to customize column rendering using JavaScript, add custom business logic, and trigger actions that can extend beyond SharePoint's boundaries. Now, this made them invaluable for creating sophisticated user experiences within SharePoint lists and document libraries. Now, Here's how Microsoft dropped this bomb on the developer community. On Friday, June 13th, 2025, Microsoft quietly published an announcement, message center ID 1094051 in the Microsoft 365 Message Center. It was titled Support Update for SharePoint Framework Field Customizers in Lists and Document Libraries. The announcement states that SharePoint Framework field customizers will be retired from SharePoint lists and document libraries on June 30th, 2026. As of the announcement date, field customizers, they're officially deprecated, but they will continue to work just fine until June 30th, 2026. Now, when the retirement date arrives, the field customizer JavaScript bundles will no longer load on pages, and SharePoint Online will revert to using the default rendering that's defined by each column's underlying data type. Microsoft emphasizes that other SPFX extensions, including app customizers, list form customizers, and command set extensions will continue to function normally. But will they for a while? Who knows? Do you trust them? Microsoft suggests two primary alternatives to replace the uh, field customizer functionality. First, declarative column formatting. This JSON-based approach allows visual customizations of columns without any custom code. And while it's useful for basic formatting and simple uh, conditional logic, it can't execute custom JavaScript or implement complex business logic. Second, Power Apps. Microsoft recommends using Power Apps for more scenarios requiring more sophisticated functionality. However, this represents a fundamental shift from the embedded customizations to separate applications. This retirement creates a significant challenge for organizations and developers who have invested in field customizer solutions over the past eight years. One of the big losses is the ability to implement custom business logic uh, within a column rendering. Declarative column formatting it simply can't replace JavaScript-based field customizers that can perform calculations, different visualizations, or calling external APIs. Organizations are also going to lose the ability to deploy customizations in a secure and reliable way at enterprise scale. Field customizers? When you package them up with a SharePoint solution package, they can be deployed through app catalogs using automated uh, application lifecycle management processes, or ALM. Declarative column formatting and Power Apps, they lack this deployment sophistication. They're limited to manual one-time customizations. Now, this retirement, it adds to an already substantial list of the Microsoft 365 platform retirements scheduled for uh, retirement in 2026. For example, Azure Access Control Services is going to retire on April 2nd, 2026. 
SharePoint 2013 workflows are going to retire on April 2nd, 2026, and SharePoint add-ins are also going to retire on April 2nd, 2026. Furthermore, SharePoint Framework isolated web parts are going to retire also on April 2nd, 2026. This announcement, it represents more than just a feature retirement in my mind. It really signals a troubling pattern in the Microsoft 365 uh, management approach. Microsoft provided zero advance notice to the developer community. It failed to get any kind of input from insiders, from MVPs who could have provided valuable feedback. And it showed no consideration for the impact on existing solutions that organizations have relied on for so many years. They didn't even explain why they were doing this. They said, it's just retired and they haven't responded to anything since then. The timing and the manner of this announcement, frankly, I think it erodes trust in the SharePoint framework as a reliable development platform. When Microsoft introduced the SharePoint framework in 2017, they positioned it as the future of SharePoint development with long-term support and a commitment. But this sudden retirement, among all the others, it really contradicts those assurances. Now, I suspect that this decision is coming from internal conflicts between the SharePoint framework engineering team and the SharePoint lists team. In 2024, the list team launched a new user experience that initially broke all the SharePoint framework customizations because they, they failed to test the compatibility with existing extensions. While they quickly patched the issue by falling back uh, to the old rendering when customizations were present, the subsequent fixes, they've been slow, problematic, and frankly, poorly executed. This raises some legitimate concerns about the future of other SharePoint framework extensions. If field customizers can be retired due to incompatibility with the new list experiences, what prevents the same fate for command set extensions or other SharePoint framework uh, features like uh, list form customizers? Coupled with the retirement of the field customizers and combined with other recent news and decisions by the Microsoft 365 development in, in the SharePoint framework space, while it pains me to say this, I can't shake the feeling that I just feel they betrayed not just my trust, but the trust in the SharePoint framework development community. Frankly, my confidence in Microsoft 365 development ecosystem and in SharePoint framework in general is at an all time low. So what should you do? Well, organizations that use field customizers in their SPFX solutions, you should begin planning your transition strategy pretty soon. Start by auditing existing field customizers to understand their functionality and determine which features can be replicated using declarative column formatting. For customizations that need special business logic or external integrations, you have to, I guess, evaluate whether Power Apps can provide an adequate alternative or if a custom solution using other M365 extensibility options might work better. But you got to strongly consider the limitations in the baggage with all these alternatives. Are they worth it? Consider this retirement when making future platform decisions. This precedent that is being set should factor into your organization's long-term SharePoint development strategy and technology investment decisions. Look, quite simply, the retirement of SharePoint framework field customizers, it represents a significant loss of functionality and flexibility for SharePoint developers and organizations. While Microsoft offers some alternatives, none of them fully replace the capabilities that SharePoint framework field customizers provide. This decision is going to highlight the importance of understanding your platform risks when you're building mission-critical customizations and applications. It also underscores the need for Microsoft to improve communication and collaboration with the developer community on decisions that are going to affect these existing investments. Now, in this video, you've learned about Microsoft's sudden retirement of SharePoint Framework field customizers and the limited alternatives that they're offering and why this decision represents a significant betrayal in the developer trust. More importantly, you now understand the steps that you need to take to protect your organization's SPFX and SharePoint investments. I'm curious what your experience with field customizers is. How is this retirement gonna impact your organization's SharePoint solutions? Leave me a thought and your concerns in the comments below this video. I'd love to hear how the community plans to navigate through this transition. And just generally, how do you feel about this? Is it really affecting you or not? Am I making a mountain out of a molehill? I don't think so based on the people I've talked to and all my students that I've talked to so far. Thank you so much for watching this video. I got a bunch of links and resources that I've referenced uh, throughout this video that I'm gonna include in the description below. And also I would really love it if you would hit the subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed to the channel so you can see when I publish more videos for full stack developers on the Microsoft 365 uh, ecosystem. Please also give it a thumbs up. It really helps others discover the channel. But with that, I'll just say thanks and I'll see you next time.